Hey guys, my name is X Factor. I hope you're having a great day. This video is going to serve three purposes. One, to share with you my mouse DPI and sensitivity settings and some advice for you. Two, how to do some aim training, how to work on your precision, target acquisition, and a good little drill that you can work on once you make some adjustments or just gain that muscle memory, which is required to be on top of your game, whether you're on console or you're on PC. And third, and most importantly, how to absolutely destroy people with the wingman. Believe it or not, it's more important than simply clicking on foreheads. Apex Legends has insane skill gap in the movement. And with the wingman, it's more about your movement and understanding the do's and don'ts than anything else, basically. So the first thing that we want to go over is I switched. I have a Corsair N65 Elite mouse. I switched from the Pro. Seemed to be suffering from some manufacturer defects. Had a couple in a row where the mouse button one would get stuck, and it was super annoying. Moved to the M65 Elite. It's got some chunkier buttons for your thumb. The sniper button's been moved. A little bit of a contour change, material change, a lot grippier, a little bit lighter than the Pro, and I'm much happier. Now, the first thing you need to know about mice is they come with crazy DPI numbers. 8,000, 12,000, 24,000, 3 million. It doesn't matter. It's all marketing hogwash to put a new number in front of you so you buy the thing, thinking it's better. In real reality, it's about comfort and the sensors and the actual quality of the product they use. Believe it or not, the biggest names in Counter-Strike, PUBG, Overwatch rarely go over 1,000 DPI. Most are in the range of 400 to 800. Me personally, my DPI is 600, even though my mouse does something like 18,000. Now, that's important. Because the higher the DPI you have on your mouse in your software, whether it's Razer or Logitech or if it's Corsair, the lower this number has to be. If your DPI is crazy high, you might not be able to lower your in-game sensitivity enough to be accurate when it comes to flicks and tracking and precision. So we run 600 DPI, 3.0 in-game, and this is super important. Some play with this, some do not. Some want a one-to-one -one ratio with their hip fire and ADS, so they're both the same. I do not. I like a reduction when I ADS. What is ADS? It's aim down sight. So I'm 0.7. What does that mean? Let's say we're going from here to here on a hip fire. Let's say that's about six inches. The second I ADS, that's more like nine inches now. So it's a reduction. It takes more movement to travel the same distance as I would have if I hip fired. What's that allow for? More precision. We did a spray guide for the R301 the other day, and it allows you to basically master spray patterns a little bit easier because if your sensitivity is too high, you ever notice, let's say we're trying to get on this target here and we're snapping uh, way past it every time, okay? We just can't snap to it. Well, with ease, that means your sensitivity is too high. Try lowering it. And because of the target range, you can work on your muscle memory and fine-tune this. So we do run an ADS reduction. One of the things I like to do is we've got Blood Hunter over here. This is the demo area where the boxes spawn. Is we like to work these four papers and six hard targets in the front. Now, there's two noises these make. A good noise. See the pretty juicy number? And bad noise. Yeah, they're heads. They got three heads. But those aren't the ones you want to hit. Well, hit the middle one by accident. You want to hit the juice right in the middle because that's where the headshot tater tot is, the damage bonus for all of your weapons, and that's what we want to train. So basically what I do is I work these different targets in different uh, patterns, if you will, and as quick as possible. We got the R301, 18 the mag because there are no accessories here yet. Respawn's working on that, and we'll try to get through all these as quick as possible. Big potato there. Not bad. A little better. Okay, all of them headshots. That was a clean one there. Not clean. Not clean. And you can do this over and over in different patterns as you see fit. And work on that as quick as possible. Or you just want to do all the paper targets and work on that. You could do that as well. Or you just want to do that to the middle or top down. You can work on different verticalities. 
any combination that you can think of to help build that muscle memory. Okay? Something that you could work on. Simple training like this goes a long way. And maybe finish it out with the spray on the moving target. And learn your leads, basically. If you're this close, you really don't need to lead if you have something like an assault rifle um, or a lighter round. But if you have a heavier round, you're going to want to lead it more, basically. Another thing that you could work on is your hip fire acquisitions as well. Maybe you're not starting ADS. Maybe you're coming in hip to ADS or you are ADS and you're just coming back to those targets. Different combinations. And I tend to mix it up depending on what I feel. Okay, that was a good one. Minus one miss there. So, that's something that you can drill different combinations of to help you figure out your sensitivity, learn it, and build that muscle memory. Now, the most important thing when it comes to dominating with the wingman is understanding some things I'm about to explain. This is hip fire. Watch how fast we are. Extremely fast, correct? ADS with an assault rifle. Slows that down a little bit, doesn't it? With an assault rifle, you're going to want to ADS or aim down sight at these ranges. Now, up close, you could give them the dirty hose and be somewhat accurate. But anything past this range, you really want to ADS or aim down sight to bonus out your DPS so that they're, they're all going on target instead of spraying all around, which we could get lucky here on some hip fire and get all 252, but we didn't. We missed a couple. Okay? So know your weapon. Now, check this out. See how inaccurate this is? There's a little spread and deviation on the assault rifle in hip fire while not moving. Keep that in mind. Okay? Remember the speed we showed? How we had a reduction with the carbine there? No reduction with the SMG. Much more accurate while hip firing. Okay? Especially at some of these ranges. You can get that DPS on target and... Obviously, this is a more preferred weapon for hip fire. But back to our topic on hand, the wingman. So you notice how we weren't exactly accurate with this. Not bad at that range. But back here, see how this is a 14? That was a real bad one. Now, if you're, if you're moving, good luck. See how crazy the deviation gets? Now... Check this out. Way back here, right? It's just kind of all over the place. We're going to get lucky with one or two here. Okay. But watch this. We're on the target, correct? What do you notice about this? This is the wingman. Perfectly accurate while in hip fire at this range. It's actually accurate even further. You don't even need to aim down sight. Now, we're going to counter for a little drop here. Okay. Just kind of aim for the top of the head. And that one missed a little bit there. Okay. But this is about the fall off right here where you lose that accuracy out of hip. Okay. So right about here... You can hip fire all day long, but you're not going to want to do that. I'm just trying to show you how extreme the wingman is, but this is what you are going to do. You're going to dance all day, and you're going to jiggle peek, and you're going to strafe your ass off because that right there is the power of the wingman. Yes, there is no speed reduction when you're aiming down sight and you're flicking this bad boy around and you're dropping headshot tater tots. But here's where the action is at, okay? At these ranges, we are perfectly accurate, hip firing, moving, and flicking. This is how you mastered the wingman. It's not doing this, nice little slow peaks, pretend this is a rock and being cute with it because you're gonna get caught out and you're gonna get popped. What you're gonna wanna do is use some cover, quick peek, flick, Dance all day, whatever you have to do, because this thing is absolutely filthy accurate while in hip fire. Okay, look at all these headshots that were just popping off. 
Now again, you can ADS. Whoop, mess that one up. Work on your, you know, left flick, right flick. Okay? But the moral of this story is hit fire strafe more. Dance like a madman. Because you are extremely hard to hit. Now, I run a ton of Blood Hunter. If you're alted, your AD speed is even crazier. What's AD speed for uh, you, uh, those that use uh, consoles? That's your strafe. This is the AD spam, we call this. Okay? And it's pretty obnoxious in this game in the right situations. Okay? Is that crazy? All about your footwork. Not so much clicking on the foreheads. Being maneuverable, being agile, not being an easy target. That is the key to using the wingman properly. Once you get an extended mag, you get this thing equipped. I prefer the HCOG 1 and 2 because I think that's a very cluttered sight. Hard to see at range. HCOG 1 or 2. And then you can start sniping people at these longer ranges because this is a heavier projectile. It's got quite a bit of lead and drop. Hit fired it. Doesn't even matter. But once you master this, it's, it's done. It's on like Donkey Kong. So that's it. Those are my tips and tricks for working on your aim, adjusting your sensitivity, and getting used to this disgusting hand cannon before they probably nerf it. As always, thanks for watching, hanging out. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them down below. Understand the mechanics. Use them to your advantage before someone else does.